Matobu ohalecha, mishkenotecha Yisrael. How goodly are the tents of Jacob, the dwelling places of Israel. And, um, you know, we're here on a very important day. And, um, you know, we're getting ready for one of, you know, the biggest celebrations that we have here in the year, in, um, you know, in Boyle Heights throughout the year. Um, is Shavuot. We're coming up to Shavuot. Um, or, or as it's called, Pentecost. It's, you know, 50 days, you know, after, you know, Passover. We have um, a holiday in which we accept the receiving of the Torah, the singing of the Torah um, at, at Mount Sinai. And oftentimes that day is used also for a community to symbolically receive the Torah into their lives. And um, when we started, um, you know, with the Chavura, and we started, you know, the museum and all of that, um, we actually inaugurated all of that work on Shavuot to symbolize the receiving of uh, the Torah, the Torah, and um, also to stand in legacy with this building, um, which this grand building that we have behind us, Congregation Tadmot Torah, the Breed Street Shul, um, it was inaugurated in 1923 on this day in the Gregorian calendar, um, which happens to coincide with Shavuot of the year um, 1923. And so um, this community received in this grand manner with the opening of the larger building of the Breed Street Shul. Um, 100 years ago today, um, the community opened up the Queen of the Shuls and uh, here she is. What a magnificent building. What a magnificent legacy. The largest synagogue west of the Mississippi and the largest Jewish community west of the Mississippi. Um, even though there was over 30 synagogues in the neighborhood, this was the big one. This was, this, this was the one that really was the queen of the shuls. Any rabbi that was here was automatically the chief rabbi of you know, Los Angeles just by nature. And um, you know, we had some great rabbis you know, that came through here. Um, and um, you, know, we, you, know, you can read about that history you know, right here you know, at the Angels Walk. You know, we have um, all of that history, which you know, I was also part of writing, you know, in order for people to understand what the history of this is. And um, just the deep rootedness and connections that people feel towards this place and how much it has played in the role, especially of Orthodox Judaism within Los Angeles, um, which um, you know, all my education I benefit from. And um, why I'm able to serve the Jewish community in the capacity that I do today is because so much that was um, handed down to me from a Jewish community, but almost everyone who you know really taught me had a connection somewhere in their family line back to this shul, and um, and so, but it is uh, it is amazing that um, you know it's lasted this long, you know, 100 years on after surviving earthquakes, um, after you know surviving all of the different types of disasters that kind of. Um, fell upon, you know, not just the Jewish community, but, you know, the greater community within this neighborhood. The Red Scare, the freeways and everything that came through, all of these things that would um, just be, you know, kind of death blows um, to a community. Believe it or not, the Jewish story didn't stop there. It still continued. Let me put this in context. This building was inaugurated in 1923, and for about a third of a century, it operated as the most important Jewish site in Los Angeles. And then there was another third of a century um, that um, it was basically in decline as the Jewish community was starting to take its root and its place on the west side and throughout the San Fernando Valley and it moved beyond here. Um, but the faithful still came out um, until 1987 when this building was ultimately damaged by the Whittier Narrows earthquake. Um, you know, this was still a place where people came and um, were praying on the three days of the week in which you would have Torah services. And um, so, you know, it was still a place of life um, until, you know, ultimately was red tagged because of an earthquake, a non reinforced brick building. Um, you know, there was a fear that, you know, it would fall down. And so it's been red tagged since 1987. And, um, but if you do the math there, you can also realize that there's been about a third of a century that this building, this main building, that we think of when we think of the Breed Street Show. Even though there is a small operating building that's been restored from in the back, the old 1916 building, um, you know, is behind there. Um, but when we think of the Breed Street Show, we think of this glorious building here. 
Um, but it is heartbreaking for us to realize that it has been um, a third of a century um, that um, you know we've been aspiring to try to restore this building and bring vibrancy and bring new life into it. And um, but you know I uh, I still haven't given up hope that we can actually accomplish this. Um, you know, unfortunately, there's um, you know there's many reasons, and we're going to have to have honest conversations in the months to come about why it's been a third of a century that we've been trying to accomplish this. Why a quarter of a century there's been money being raised in order to, tens of millions of dollars have been raised over and over again in order to try to bring this to fruition and this building is still staying abandoned um, and is indeed seeing even more decline over the years. Um, and you know, it's, um, you know, it's sad. You know, it's really, really sad because I think a, a lot of us, you know, we just get heartbroken and when we come by this building that we love that stands in for a history that we love and that we think that needs to be respected. You know, quite frankly, it being left in this condition is a Hilu Hashem. It's a desecration of the name of God. You know, um, you know leaving it in this condition, it, it's heartbreaking and it's demoralizing, um, in, you know, to the Jewish community that's still here. Yeah, there are still Jewish people here. Um, despite the rumors, <laughs> otherwise, there are still Jewish people that are operating here in this community, that are still holding Shabbat services, that are still holding, you know, um, you know our, our holiday services, that are still doing the social justice work within this community. The Jewish story of Boyle Heights, East Los Angeles is not dead. There, as a matter of fact, we're growing. Now since COVID has ended and we started opening up to doing regular programming again, how did we open up again? Started with baby namings. <laughs> that means that we're growing. We have a natural growth of a Jewish community um, here within this community. The story's not done. Um, but I would like to see this building ultimately restored. And I know we can do it. You know how I know we can do it? Because the oldest synagogue in Los Angeles, which is you know the original Sinai congregation, now we know it as Sinai Temple. The original, the old, the, the original location of that congregation, now known as the Pico Union Project, you know, that building dates back to 1908 in a community that has like no Jewish people living within it. Um, however, it's become one of the central, central hubs of um, Jewish culture, um, but also of social justice action, being able to use the space in order to feed thousands of people every week in order to offer resources um, to the people with all the needs that they have when it comes to health care, when it comes to, um, you know, um, workers' rights, when it comes to everything that they need, you know. Um, we've been able to repurpose the building in order to serve the purpose of the people around us in order to be a good neighbor, in order to live by the principle of and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what we envision for this. Um, however, there's been a lot of um, fluff over the years. There's, a, there's about, um, you know, there's been a lot of excuses made for why we haven't made action on this. But, you know, um, you know, you might often see me outside some days during the week praying out in front of this fence. And you're going to start seeing it more often. Until this building is open, I'm going to have... Um, you know, a silent Amidah protest. <laughs> You're going to see me out here with Tefillin and Talit praying in front of this building on the days when there are Torah services in order to make in order to make it known that we still care for this building, that the Jewish people are still here, and that we still have aspirations of fulfilling our promise to this community in order to make this an active community center that is going to serve the needs of the community while reviving the heritage, the long heritage that Jewish people have of doing social justice work um, within this community. And, um, you know, we, as I stand here in front of you, I just have to thank God that it's still standing. You know, I, um, you know there's so many buildings, so many historic buildings that have been burnt down. Um, some of them seemingly purposefully for people's development purposes in recent years. And even St. Mary's caught on fire in, in, in recent years. Um, and that's an active, the most beloved church in, in our neighborhood. How much more so this building, which is, you know, looks abandoned, um, you know, it's dangerous, you know, for this site. 
um, until we actually, you know, start occupying this site with actual, you know, with some real action, with some real programming here. Until these fences are brought down, inter interesting enough, this building is not safe. The only way that we can preserve this building is by making it alive again. And so, but I have to thank God that a hundred years on, this building is still here. Even though earthquakes and everything have challenged, it is still here. And um, we still have hope for the future. But, you know, even though my heart's kind of broken seeing that, you know, it's even in worse condition than it's been in many years, to see that just recently they put up signs that said, right over here, this property closed to the public, no entry, without permission. Um, it kind of tells you something about the status of this site and um, just how, um, you know, really abandoned it is, how much it really is neglected. Um, and, um, you know, I really, really, really um, hope that we are able to ultimately, ultimately able to bring life to this building. But, you know, on the heart level, I'm just grateful that she's still here for now, that we still have, you know, tomorrow and, and hopefully the day after that in order to be able to, and the day after that, in order to intentionally, um, you know, direct our hearts at trying to do everything that we can in order to restore the pride, in order to restore a symbol of faith, in order to restore a symbol of social justice to this community. Um, so, you know, even though the holiday hasn't started, I am grateful that, you know, God has at least, you know, allowed this building to, you know, live this time. So, we have one blessing to say. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, shehechianu, bekiyamanu, behegianu, bizman hazeh. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who has, who, who, who has kept us and sustained us and has brought us to this season. And, um, you know, I say that, I'm saying that, you know, Bazman Hazel, instead like a nice Hasidic boy, we thought was taught, Bazman Hazel, me, has brought me to this season, but I'm standing in for the entire community, so it's proper to say, Bazman Hazel, that, you know, us as a community, we're dedicated to restoring this building and restoring the pride and the symbols of social justice to this community. Um, I just hope that um, in, you know, the months to come, that we'll be able to, you know, raise, um, you know, just awareness about how beloved this building is, how much it's needed as an operating community center. Um, but we're going to have to have honest discussions about why it is still sitting in this condition. Um, you know, quite honestly, the people in charge have not been completely forthright, transparent, and honest with the community. And you know what? It's I, for years, I have. Um, you know, I've held on faith, even as many people in the community um, were very, have been very, very upset over the neglect that has gone into this building. And, you know, that money has been raised endlessly and endlessly and seems to go nowhere. Um, it, it has, you know, really, it has really been very detrimental to, to, to many of us on a heart level, um, you know, to see this. As a matter of fact, I do tours regularly here and it's very regularly that people just see the barbed wire in front of the show where their Holocaust surviving parents raise them um, and to see it in this condition is traumatizing um, but it's just as traumatizing to a Mexican-American community in which there's the belief that the Jewish community who still is quite influential in the area um, doesn't seem to care um, you know if, if, if this is the way that we keep our shul then you know what does it what does it say about us you know if this, it's a building dedicated to our God and this is the way we keep it then then, then how can we be trusted you know in the, the the way that we're doing development and stuff you know within our own community in this day and end it's it's very very a nuanced thing psychologically in the minds of people about what the con this building being left in this condition means, and it leaves a very unsavory flavor in, you know, people's mouths. And, um, you know, I, um, I hear both sides of the story. What I do know is that every time I come by this building, people literally grab hold of me as today, <laughs> begging me to do something, you know, begging me to do something. And, um, 
you know, out of kindness, I try to, you know, just you know, kind of be a little bit salty with those within the Jewish community who I believe, you know, have the ability to actually help make a difference. But it's about time that we start having an honest conversation about, you know, why this building, you know, is, you know, being left in this condition for a third of a century now. Um, I hope that this year, um, we are actually able to turn a page in order to actualize our dreams and to make this alive again. But this Shavuot, um, I, you know, I want you to all know that uh, the Jewish story of Royal Heights is not over. The Jewish community is still here, alive and well. Um, but um, you know, the, the, the one trauma for us is to see this left in this condition. You know, it's, it really is. Um, you know, I remember hearing Rabbi Zilberstein's daughter, you know, refer to, you know, just seeing the building left in the condition that it was. And that was the late 80s, early 90s. It was like seeing, you know, the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple in disrepair, you know, after sacked by Rome. And um, it, kind of, it kind of feels that way, you know, that, that you know, our, the most sacred thing that we have here within this community um, it is, you know, falling into disrepair more and more so every day. And, um, but I hope that in this next year, we'll finally be able to get over our, our own personal insecurities, our own personal self-interest and work together in order to ultimately accomplish what we promised as a Jewish community. And that is to make this an active Jewish community center for the community. So. Um, any of you who want to come out and dive in with me in front of this building, you'll see me out here with Talos and Tefillin <laughs> during, you know, during this, you know, during the week, message me, join me. But also, um, you know, anyone who will listen, um, you know, share with them how important this building is and do whatever you can to try to contribute in ways that will intentionally, um, with intention, Bakavana make this an actual working community center as we had promised. Um, I hope this year it'll happen. And so um, I'm going to wish you all a you know a happy holiday, good yantif to all of you, and hug um, And um, you know as you um, you know enjoy you know your Shavuot celebrations, think of us out here in Boyle Heights, East Los Angeles, the Boyle Heights Kavira, and all the people of the, the Jewish East Side who, uh, you know, still um, just like to come out here as the sun's about to set in order to take in just the glory um, of, of this beautiful building that stands in for such a, a, a phenomenal history that needs to continue to be shared. And um, so, Hak Sameya, to everyone. It's like, is it?